Jesus talks about this, and I think this is the doctrine that we find in Scripture that applies to us today, which would be very similar to what applied to David. Exactly the same. Here is that. Jesus says, if you love me, right? If you love me, Jesus says, you will keep my commands. God does require obedience from us. He does require his people to be obedient to him. That is the requirement. That is the doctrinal value of what we can gather from this. If we want to be people who have a heart after God, we must know our scriptures and we must be able to apply them in our lives so that we are obedient to what God's commands are to us. That's what it means to have a heart after God. That's why David was chosen over Saul, was because he had a desire. And here's, here's what it comes down to. is When Jesus says, and when it means to have a heart, is there's this love connection to it, right? Why is it, what is it my motivating factor for doing the things that I do? Do I do the things I do because I love God? Do I do the things I do because I love Him? Or do I do it because I fear Him? If I'm obedient to God, I'm not obedient because I'm afraid, but I'm obedient because I love him. And that's the difference. There's a key difference here. Does anyone here have parents? Good. I'm glad to see that. When you have parents, there's two ways that you follow your allegiance to your parents. It's either out of fear, because you're afraid you're going to get one of these, or you follow them, you follow what they ask you to do because you love them, right? We know the difference between the two. But it's of greater punishment to us when we disappoint our parents because we don't obey them, isn't it? It's like when I fall short of obeying my parents, I'm, I'm not fearful, but I'm fearful of disappointing them, right? Because I love them. And so that should be the desire for us when we follow after God. He is, he, is a, he is a same heart, a kindred heart to God, because the things of God are important to him. So in your life, are the things of God important to you? Or do they kind of take second nature? When God says, don't do something or do something, do we do it? Right? God has many, many commands in Scripture which we as Christians are called to follow. Right? So we are to go into all the world. We are to baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are to teach others the commandments of Christ. How do I know the commandments unless I have the Bible with me? Unless I read scripture, I don't really know the commandments. But like the kings of old, you and I have a benefit. We have our own scriptures. There's no excuse for us as to not knowing what it is that God asks of us. Right? We are to feed the poor. We are to proclaim the good news of who Jesus Christ is. We are to live holy lives. Right? And we don't do this alone. The one thing about David that we know from Scripture is David was given the power of the Holy Spirit when he was anointed in order to serve, right, his people. He was given the Holy Spirit. You and I, as believers, are given the Holy Spirit. You and I have the Holy Spirit in us. The Holy Spirit allows us to be obedient, not because we fear God, even though fear is not always a bad thing, but it's, it's out of love. It's our desire to please God, which is why we do what we do. So God has not left you alone for you to follow him without any direction or guidance because it says in Scripture that he has taken away our heart of stone and he has given us a heart of flesh. He has written upon our hearts his law and the things that we are to do.